Hello and welcome to Bits Box World Builds Made Easy. Well, welcome back to my two day kill team paint, getting ready for a battle of uh, kill team. And uh, I've been painting up these crude beauties. In my last video, go and check that out if you haven't, I painted up their skin. So I went with three different colours for the skin, all within sort of the yellows and greens range and uh, I did some browns as well so today we're going to be focusing on everything else focusing on the clothes the weapons and using some cool dipping inks that I've not used before so this one here is a walnut brown intensity ink sounds very good intensity ink and I do quite like the intensity ones they do have quite a nice vibrance to them and this one it goes very dark in the recesses and leaves the, the top bits very, very light, which um, is is quite nice. It, it's sort of the extreme end of highlighting if you were to do, do traditional highlighting. But um, it does look quite good, and I really do like the, the dark depth of the brown on this one. But um, if you're not happy with how highlighted it is, just go over it again. It's the great thing about these dipping inks is, yeah, just go over them again. Once it's dried, do another coat, and that will just bring in that rich brown color. Whereas Elfwood Brown, I think looks really good as sort of a leather effect. So using it for belts or straps on things, and um, it does come up with that really nice leathery color, leathery effect. Now, this one here, Azora Dip. Wow, wow, wow. This has got to be, this has taken the title as my favorite dipping ink so far. It's stolen it from the acid green, which I really like for sort of green skins and painting orcs and things. But this blue is awesome and uh, makes me want to paint ultramarines. <laughs> I can imagine doing a unit of ultramarines just in this blue and I've used it quite a bit with my crudes just because I like it so much. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that one but please don't be harsh, I love it so much. Next up then is burgundy dip and I wanted to use this on my leader because I wanted him to have this really awesome cloak that really stood out in a nice shade of burgundy. And uh, yeah, I'm not sold on this one. I don't have the same affinity on this one. I should have gone with my blue, but um, it does a job. But with some dipping inks, I do find them hit or miss. And this one was a miss. Maybe multiple coats would help that out. But anyway, moving on, this is the black. So, I thought I'll stick it on the eagle or the birds on the top of this uh, on the top of this rifle from the Crute Tracker. So and um, yeah, it's quite nice. It, it does exactly what it says: goes grey and black. And um, yeah, quite happy with this. And I actually, because I I like this one so much, I went a bit crazy and started painting lots of weapons with that as well as well as this brown, so this is skeleton brown, and um, this one's quite nice. I do quite like this colour. It might replace the uh, Elfwood brown for leathers. I think it's just got a better tone for a leather colour. It's sort of got that ambery, orangey glow. Now, Phoenix Orange, this is another intensity ink, and um, I've used this on a couple of other models for, like, hair, so red hair, you could use that for dwarves, I guess. But um, I thought I'm going to use it on the beak of this bird just to sort of give it a bit more colour range because I've gone with browns and the black and um, that orange just looks really good. And I think it just makes it, the intensity of it is really, really nice. And while I'm just finishing off the beak of that bird, why don't you think about hitting the subscribe button and joining the Bitsbox World community. You'd be so welcome. I really, really do like 
this way of painting. I've only recently started to do this. I used to paint in a very traditional way, going from your dark colors all the way up to your bright colors, doing the highlighting in that way. And my models looked okay. They looked decent from a distance and battle ready, but it would take me an age to paint one model. Whereas I can now do 12 models in two nights. That was completely unheard of before for me. So I really love this way of using the dipping inks over the dry brushed white models, but I still do the metallic colors in the traditional way. So let's get some lead belcher out on the knives then, just to get them looking sharp and ready. So I've really enjoyed just challenging myself for this. The best way I'm finding to get models done is to have something that you're looking forward to, to using them in. So I'm getting ready to have a battle. Who do you think I'm going to face? Let me know in the comments below. And I painted the gun with the dipping ink black and then went over with lead belcher just on the very edges of that gun and it makes it look a bit more war torn, a bit used, black in places, silver in other places. Whereas this one here, this blade, I just painted completely lead belcher over a white undercoat and um, yeah, just going to work my way up on that, get a bit of gold in there as well because I really do like gold and silver together. I do that quite a bit. And then this is what I've been doing with my my sort of metallic metal effects. Painting it completely lead belcher and then going over it with a black wash. So that black just sits into the recesses and I just water down the black dipping ink. And then when that dries, just go over the very edges of that with a brighter silver. You can do the same for your golds as well and it looks really good. But anyway, let's get these done because we've got a game to play and uh, I need to get them ready. Two days, two day paint. So onto the bases. I can't believe that I'm at this stage. I would have never been there with traditional methods. And I think this guy is looking awesome. He's looking really, really good along with the rest of his kill team. Really happy with how these are looking, but the base could have something extra. And I've got this yellow static grass. It's five mil, so it's quite long. And uh, I really think that in a futuristic kind of city fight that you would find yourself in with kill team, a bit of burnt or dying grass would just finish these models really really nicely and I use this method when I use five mil grass the static grass because I don't have an adapter to make it stand up but if you pinch a clump and pull the bottom you end up with these little tufts of static grass that you can glue on so I call this the pinch and pull technique and uh, really simple and um, if you haven't up until this point, you can check out my video of how I use this to good effect with some of my scenery builds. So it's my DIY static grass tufts. But uh, I think you can get a good effect without having to have an adapter. You do a little bit of cleaning up, so I'm just taking out the loose bits there. And then if needs be, I can lift any of the edging bits just with a paintbrush and maneuver it into place. And then final, final thing, a few rocks. So these are just bits of grit that uh, I could paint up, but I think that they look half decent or mostly decent anyway without painting them. So just have those added on to finish up my bases. And there we are, looking really, really good. And my unit, my kill team, is ready for action. And I did it two days, 
two days to get these guys all painted up and ready for a battle. And uh, there they are, lined up, ready to take on their enemy. And uh, that video will be coming very soon. Thanks for watching Bitsbox World, builds made easy.